Hello and welcome everyone to the Week Ahead Commodity Report for the 20th to the 24th of May presented by myself, Phil Carr, at the Gold and Silver Club and of course we will be reviewing gold, silver and crude oil prices for the week ahead. So first of all we saw gold prices fall on Friday to a two-week low, in fact the biggest weekly loss in one month as the dollar advanced off the back of strong US economic data. In fact we covered that in detail on last week's report on asset of the day where we saw the potential for gold to break down from the upper end of the channel within a range bound market back towards the lower end of the range and that broke down perfectly in our favor banking us 190 points profit on Friday before the close meanwhile hedge funds and money managers they have raised their net long positions in gold in the latest week oil prices also slipped on Friday but ended the week slightly higher on rising concerns over supply disruptions in the Middle East due to US and Iran political tensions escalating and over the last week, hedge funds and money managers, they again reduced their net long positions in US crude oil futures and options in the latest week. So with that, let's move over to the charts and we'll talk you through the key levels and the forecasts for the week ahead. First of all, we're going to start off with gold here, which really worked out perfectly in line with our analysis. So essentially what we've seen here is another test of the upper end of this trend channel here, found resistance between that 1297 up to around the 1303 zone, and we've seen profit taking come in at that level and then essentially as we've started to see trade war tensions start to dissipate later on in the week we've seen the US stock markets rebound which was what we suggested to look out for the potential for the S&P 500 the Dow Jones to start to rebound in price if you see that happen then look out for gold to then start to pull back and sell off and give up some of these gains it was very interesting at the start of last week on the Monday we saw a retaliation from China with respect to the trade war tariffs that the US had put on China Gold broke out back above 1,300 US dollars per ounce, but no follow through beyond that level. That's where we've then seen this price structure start to roll over, giving us plenty of time, in fact, to build up short positions around this zone of resistance, which is exactly what we discussed on last week's week ahead report as well. Look at that zone of 1292 up to 1297 as a potential sell zone. It's where traders will be taking profit and sellers will be sitting at that level, ready to potentially capitalize on the next move down for gold. Remember, normally the month of May, is not a positive month for gold. In fact, typically over the month of May, gold returns a negative return of minus 1.2%. And at the moment, gold is only down half a percent on the month. So potentially we could actually see more downside now as we progress between now and the end of the month. We've also broken through this bear flag formation, which is what we highlighted as well on last week's report that we had the potential if we started to build up momentum to the downside to break through a bear flag and then start to move within a range bound market. Still on gold, I would suggest we have a range here if you have a look at the support zone that's coming in around 1265 you have resistance certainly which is coming in at the moment just around the 1300 level you can still trade that range we are within a range of our market right now essentially if we roll over next week if we make a move back towards that 1275 to 1270 zone and potentially 1260 as well that's where i would be looking out for evidence of buyers potentially coming back into gold remember hedge funds and money managers again they've raised their net long positions in gold in the latest week and of course we saw that big breakout to the upside at the beginning of last week now what i would look out for going into next week from a tradable opportunity is that we could see a little bit more downside here rolling over especially if we break back below friday's low which are around 1275 then we could start to make a move back towards that 1270 zone and then below that of course we have a lot of support at that 1266 layer now we'll be looking out for evidence on lower time frames to see whether we do catch a bid if gold gets to that level whether it starts to reverse and bounce off that zone if it doesn't and we continue to see it follow through to the downside and then we in fact see gold take out the swing lows here around that 1265 zone i would then look out for that 1260 zone that would be the next major layer of support and then below that if we were to continue let's say for example we do break down and we see a revisit back towards that layer of support take out the swing low the next level i would be targeting would be around that 1257 zone if we were to see gold just continue to follow through to the downside remember still week to week we're tending to see gold move within that 200 to 250 point range you want to capitalize on that range we are still within a range of our market at the moment with gold and very simply you want to look to sell at the resistance zones here capitalize on the move back down to 
to support. And then once we start getting back to support, look at buying back in with confirmation. OK, so that really works out very well for gold. But just bear in mind that overall, the month of May tends to be negative for gold, approximately 1.2 percent in the negative. And at the moment, gold is down half a percent on the month. So potentially we have a bit more downside here to come over the month of May before we really start seeing support come into this market. But look for evidence of buyers to come back in around that 1270 to 1260 zone if we do get down to those levels. So definitely have gold on your radar as we go into next week. And well done to all of you who capitalized on that sell short from another tap of the upper end of this trend channel here. One, two, three, fourth time we've come back towards the upper end of that trend channel. And we've essentially rolled over and broken down exactly in line with that analysis. So well done if you caught that move. Now moving over to silver, silver really worked out perfectly as well from what we discussed on last week's week ahead report. We've come back into resistance here, back around the 21 day moving average. We started to roll over in price. The two levels that we highlighted last week both got hit. So we highlighted the downside targets of 1450 and 1445 below that. In fact, you can see where we've overshot here to the downside on Friday, continue to follow through and finding support right at the lower end of the Keltner channel, closing right at the weekly lows at $14.35 per ounce. What I find interesting on silver is that hedge funds and money managers have actually added to their net long positions over the latest week. So potentially they are buying into this dip. Now, again, normally the month of May is not a supportive month for silver, and it tends to typically produce a negative return of minus 1.5%. But silver is now down 3.75% for the month of May. So we've seen this acceleration in price action to the downside here. And silver, to a certain degree, is now getting quite oversold. So I would watch out. I certainly wouldn't be selling silver at these levels, not at the lower end of the Keltner channel. The optimal zone to be selling into this is selling into rallies each time we come back towards that 21-day moving average zone or very simply back towards the upper end of this channel. It's been a great area to look for sell short positions at that upper trend channel. And now we're residing right at the lower end of the trend channel here again. So I would watch out for that. Potentially what we could see going into next week is a flush out just below Friday's low here. So we may break down ever so slightly lower and start to make a move back towards the next major layers of support here. Of course, a huge layer of support will be around that $14 zone. I don't know that we'll get that low on silver, but if we do get another rollover of price, we could see a flush out of positions here if we were to see a break back below that weekly low and then resulting in some sort of V-shaped reversal capitulation move as we see buyers potentially come back in. We know, of course, that hedge funds and money managers, they continue to accumulate on these lower prices for silver right now. So I would watch out for that. We may break down ever so slightly lower, but just look out for the potential to have some sort of capitulation move or support to come in once we start getting towards that $14 level if we do break down that low. But really, silver has worked out perfectly here. This has completed the move for us. It's rolled over, broken below the swing low, which is exactly what we forecast here. Broken down to the levels of 1450 and 1445 as we discussed on last week's report so again well done if you did catch those moves on silver over the latest week now moving over to crude oil now crude oil has been really great for us over the last week so we we're initially shorting at the beginning of the week we capitalized on the sell short banked 80 points profit on our sell we then reversed position and we went long on brent crude oil after the u.s oil inventories on wednesday banked half profits for 150 points and now the remainder of our trade we have open at the moment with our stop loss protected so where we are at at the moment as we go into next week what i find interesting here is last week hedge funds and money managers they increased their net longs on brent crude oil to the highest level in seven months we started to see brent crude oil get supported at the beginning of the week that really got going on wednesday after the oil inventories data and we saw an escalation in tensions in the middle east between the us and iran which really helped oil to catch a bid later on in the week here we broke in fact back above the midpoint of the Keltner channel back above the 21 MA we could see a lot of pressure building up here and took advantage of this breakout to the upside for 150 points on Friday we have started to pause a bit here with oil and we can see where it's retesting again around that 21 day moving average zone as we go into next week the way I would look at oil right now is still within a range bound market particularly if I just take you back to WTI crude oil so essentially the levels that we were looking at and we discussed on asset of the day 
midweek as well, where we discussed oil in detail, where we were looking at a range between $60 per barrel up to that $63.50 handle. That's exactly what we've seen here. We're seeing right now oil tend to move within the three to 350 point range week to week. That's a very tradable range at the moment. We're definitely seeing sellers come in at the upper end of the range, keeping the price below $64 per barrel on US oil. But we're also seeing a lot of buyers come in at that $60 per barrel handle defending the price. Hedge funds and money managers, they have again reduced their net long positions on crude oil over the latest week. Although in total, they are net long on this market. They're just reducing their long positions over the latest month. We keep on seeing reduction in the overall net longs. Where we're at as we go into next week, and we are at the upper end of the range. What US oil really needs to do in order to have a breakout move next week would be to break and close back above $64 per barrel. That is where you could start to see the price action pick up to the upside. You can see here where you have a bull flag formation, a potential continuation pattern here for oil. What we really like to see for oil is that break and close back above the 21 MA as well to re-establish a potential uptrend here too. Now, normally the month of May is positive for oil with a return of over 1% to the upside. In fact, Brent crude oil, we saw that last week. It broke out to the upside, was delivering over a 1% return for May. Obviously, at the moment, we're only halfway through the month here. So we may continue to consolidate within a range bound market. And there are opportunities, there have been so far anyway, to sell short oil from the upper end of this range, take it back to support and then buy back in at support and take it back towards resistance zones. But we do have a buy signal as we go into next week on oil. So as I mentioned, we're actually long on Brent crude oil right now with 150 points profit banked on that trade. So we banked half profits and we've now moved up the stop loss to protect this position. So as we go into next week, if we're going to see more momentum to the upside, I favor Brent crude oil over WTI crude oil for a long. But if we're going to see weakness come back into the crude oil market, I favor WTI crude oil for a sell short over Brent crude oil. We can see that from overall the positions from speculators where they've built up more long positions in Brent crude oil than they have in WTI crude oil. So I'm looking out for next week to see if we can springboard off this 72 US dollar per barrel handle for Brent and start making a move back towards last week's highs here around the 73.50 zone and then potentially make a move up to that 74 to 75 US dollar per barrel handle for Brent crude oil. If it has a failed move here, it starts to break back down again breaks back below the monthly pivot here and we see a move back towards 70 US dollars per barrel we would then exit the remainder of our position and we would reassess particularly if we were to get a break back below the midpoint of the counter channel here as well obviously you want to keep a very close eye on what is going on in the Middle East at the moment the tensions between the US and Iran can very quickly erupt and see big price movements to the upside on crude oil the other factor to consider as well as trade tensions start to escalate between the US and China that has a negative impact on oil demand and as such that can also so see the price action come back towards the downside for oil. So you need to have both of those on your radar as we go into next week. Also, the big catalyst for large moves on oil tend to be the oil inventories data. You have the API data, which will be coming out on Tuesday, and also the weekly US oil inventory data, which will be coming out on Wednesday. Those are great catalysts for some big moves in the oil market as well. As I mentioned before, having access to this real-time news will help you a lot with your trades. In fact, if you do want access to that, you want the exact trades, trade management that we're taking, at the Golden Silver Club, as well as real-time access to all of our research and market updates, there is an opportunity for you to do so. If you would like to join a community of successful traders at the Golden Silver Club, you get access to exclusive live trading room webinars. You have real-time trade alerts delivered throughout the week, including trading research and market insights. You have access to our private members academy website and also support and one-to-one -one mentoring. For more information and to make an application, please go to www.jointhelivetradingroom.com. The link is also below this report in the description. So just click on the link, make an application, and we will get in touch with you ASAP. And also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you're always kept updated with the latest commodity reports.